Brad here with Twisted Out Brewery. Today we're going to get in touch with the raw ingredients for brewing beer. So what we've done here is we've created a malt tea with eight different malt varieties. Everything from our base malt all the way up to our dark caramel malts. And uh, the purpose of this experiment is so that we can decide on which malts we want to use for which beers. We want to identify the flavor profiles of all these. We also want to look at the color. As you can see, it's a pretty wide range of colors that we're getting out of all these malts. So sometimes you want to create a beer and you're looking for that specific color. So we can kind of now see what these colors are bringing to the table from each malt variety. It's really going to help us dial in our recipes. It's a fun thing. I've done this experiment once as a home brewer, but only with a couple different malt varieties, and it was just some new stuff that I got in. I wanted to see what it was uh, capable of, but this is the first time we've actually been able to take a wide variety of malts, do it all at once. All right, today we have Chris here joining us. We've been dying to perform this experiment for a long time. We're so excited to try this out today. So I want to start with our Pilsner malt. And it is interesting. We wanted to see the Pilsner to the two rows side by side. And from the looks of it, you don't really see much, but I'm curious to see if there is a flavor difference. So we've actually steeped this at uh, about 155. It's about mash temperature. Uh, it's been about 20 minutes now. We let it kind of settle out. We're gonna use this little strainer here, and we're actually gonna carefully strain this and make a big mess on the floor here. <laughs> oh man, this is actually pretty tough. So we're gonna have a mess to clean up here at the end. Let me go back here and put a little bit more on this one. I'm really surprised with the color. I, I I expected a little darker, a little more, more golden color straw to it. But. I did too. For the base malt, you'd think it would have like a little bit of a yellow, but it actually almost has a rice color to it. A slight bready smell to it almost? A little bit on the nose. It's actually very pleasant. It's very clean. Yeah. Um, uh, the sweetness isn't as sweet as I was anticipating, but it's actually pretty good. And what we did is uh, used one ounce of malt in each one, so it's an even playing field, and we put the same amount of water in each one, it's the same steeping time, so it gives us a fair comparison here. You know, I think what we should do is leave some in here and actually go get another set of glasses, and uh, we can compare the two rows side by side because they're so close in flavors. All right, got our little rinse bucket over here, so I'm just gonna gently rinse this off. Now we're gonna go in with the two row. Or if I can try to do a little bit better job. Uh, It's a little stronger aroma than the Pilsner. Absolutely. Like, uh, surprisingly. They don't look much different, but the, the aroma is definitely a little stronger on the two row. Wow. I can, de I can taste the difference. Definitely. Definitely a major difference. The two row has a stronger flavor, hands down. Definitely. I agree with that. I actually, I, I kind of like the two-row better. I personally like the two-row better myself. I could see how this could uh, be beneficial in some really light lagers and stuff because the flavor itself is lighter. Like German style beer. Yeah. yeah. But um, two-row is, is definitely my base model of choice for sure, I think. I, I agree. I, I'm really surprised. All right, so let's use our dump bucket here. All right, moving on. Next on our list here, from light to dark, we are coming in with our Munich Light, which is also a it could be considered a base malt. It's a, it's a little heavier, a little darker for a base malt, but this is used in a lot of Marzins, Oktoberfests. Major color difference. I think this one was uh, 10 Lovabon, and um, these are like right around two and three, I think. 1.8, I believe. Something like that, yeah. Oh yeah, the aroma. You can definitely, nice. yeah. Very pleasant. Uh, what is that? Like, <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's got um between like a ready taste to uh, 
It's very unique, for sure. I like it, though. I like it. Maybe a slight hint of caramel in that, maybe? I, you know, I, I feel like I'm getting kind of getting a biscuity taste. Yes. That. Moving on. So next on the list is our Caramel 10. I actually thought that this was going to be darker than this. It's not much darker than the Munich. And surprisingly, we thought our biscuit malt was going to be closer yes. to this color range. And it actually turned pretty dark. Turned and dark. Uh, I, I can't wait to get to that one. I'm pretty curious. But we're going to go in order here with this Caramel 10. Very nice color, very nice darker straw color. Um, not surprised. I think it's a uh, great spot on. I think it's a great color. Wow. I do start to pick up that caramel note, but it's very subtle. Very subtle, very, very in the back, mm -hmm. definitely. It's a very light, pleasant, caramel flavor and I think this is great like if you if you want just a hint of that caramel flavor without the beer turning dark yeah I think this is a good choice yeah I wouldn't be afraid to use actually half whiskey is not out of this yeah I, 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 I agree with that I think um, you could get away with using a larger portion now what threw me off though because when you looked at the the raw grain it actually looked darker yes than what the color of this came out to be so I was expected to be stronger. It's not as strong as I expected, but it's probably a good thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I really actually like that undertone of the caramel, caramel tint. I, I got an idea. We're gonna we're gonna make a beer. <laughs> I was kind of thinking the same. Yeah, thing. but I think just utilizing this as the only um, specialty malt, you know, maybe like a little carapils or something like that, but. I really have a have an idea concept right now with this malt. Now that I understand the base flavor profile of it, so all right, we're gonna move on now. Why don't you pour some melon here? I'm tired of making a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna let you make a mess now. See how he did it. Actually, you did a better job than I did. <laughs> all right. Melony malt. So this is a, what I don't even know how to pronounce it. Melanoidin. But the, the malt itself is called Melanie. Huh. Actually, not what I was expecting out of that malt either. Uh, me neither. I was expecting a little bit sweeter, but the uh, the darkness of that, it, it's actually tastes like a real dark style uh, grain, really. It does, yeah. Um, uh, it has a, a almost. If you would so ask me, I said that was a biscuit malt. I agree. It does have it. It has a strong biscuity character. I am picking up some caramel notes on that too. It's like biscuit and caramel, kind of blended yeah, together. I agree. I, 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 very nice. Um, I mean, it's a good tasting malt for sure. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely threw me for a loop. I, I was expecting something different. I love the color of it though. Yes. It does almost have a little bit of a red hue to it. A little bit, yes. It's a, it's a hint. Mm. I think we actually used a good ratio of malt to water with this too. Because, you know, like if it was too thick, if we used too much malt in this process, I feel like it'd be almost undrinkable. Yeah, exactly. But here, you're, you're picking up that, that flavor, and it's diluted enough where you can actually drink it. Like, actually, that's quite delicious. I think we could kind of uh, sit here and have a, a toned down glass of this. You really could do, you know? Yeah. It's that clean, that, that tasty. It's a very, very tasty. All right, I'm going to have one more, and then I think we'll move on. Yeah, it's very interesting. I mean, forefront, I, I think biscuit definitely jumps out there. Yes, definitely. Which surprised me for Melanie Maul. I mean, I don't even think biscuit is on the flavor profile of that. I don't believe it is. Speaking of biscuit, that's where we're, you know, let me give this a quick rinse too. Yeah, good. Idea. Probably not gonna make much of a difference, but we'll be safe. So now this is the actual biscuit malt that we're supposed to be getting a heavy biscuit malt flavor. So 
let's see if this uh, actually has a halfway decent red hue to this one too. It does. Oh, I tell you what, man, the smell. Oh, what a difference! It's it's biscuit right on the nose. When I smell that, I think of biscuit. Oh yeah, it has a slight bitterness to it. Oh man, and it's yeah, that is that is crazy. I mean, night and day. I mean, I thought this had a subtle biscuit mm -hmm. note to it, but the flavor of this, it's it's almost undescribable. Right. You know, it's uh, I mean, it's definitely. I, I think they nailed it with a biscuit. Like, I don't know how else to describe it. It's very pleasant, actually. Uh, other than the little bit of the bitterness that I'm personally getting, uh, it's a very, very nice, clean-tasting malt. Yeah, you know, it's it's at the end. You know, like when you swallow and it comes mm -hmm. out, it's a, I don't know if you're calling that the bitterness, maybe? Pro probably that's where it is, because I feel it in the back. Yeah, 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 right in the back there. Um, it's very strong, too. Like, I think you have to be careful with this. Too much, too much would be overpowered. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Whereas I think like that caramel tin, I, it would be hard to overdo it on that. Like I could sit and actually drink a glass of just that straight caramel tin. You, you could this probably make one a straight can't. beer right out of that caramel tin. Yeah, all 100% caramel tin. That'd be kind of a neat. I feel like it's almost similar to like like a Munich as mm -hmm. a as a little bit of a darker base malt, you right. know. But um, yeah, this is. Whew. I've, I've had enough. It's pretty I, strong. It, it's I, strong. I like it. You know, I like where it's going, but I think, you know, um, a, a little bit, like maybe like a pound in a barrel. Right. You know, right. if we go like more than that, I think it would... Uh, it would be overpowering. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. Moving down the list. What we got next? Uh, Caramel 40. Caramel 40. So before we even taste this, what do you think that you're going to get out of this? Caramel. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Um, I'm very interested in all of these because it, you really need to do this experiment yourself at home if you possibly can. It is really mind-blowing. Um, the flavor profiles is amazing. All right. What do you get on the nose there? I'm really not picking up a, the caramel note on the nose. No, I'm not either. Um, it almost smells bready when I smell this. Yeah. Hmm. I'm getting a, a decent amount of sweetness out of that. Yeah. The, like a, a sweet, slight caramel taste to it. Very nice. I, I definitely taste the caramel, mm -hmm. but it's not like, it's very, it, it's hard to explain. It's a very subtle caramel. It's not like if you were to go and eat like a caramel candy or something right, like that type right, of caramel. It's right. uh, it's like it, it presents itself in a hint, and it's stronger than the caramel tin. So, so it is definitely you, you a You definitely step have up. to be very careful with this in itself. Absolutely. As long as you don't add way too much. I yeah. was expecting a heavy caramel flavor, like a, a really stronger caramel flavor than this. Yeah, I was too. Uh, but I'm surprised about with the sweetness though. Sweetness is really nice. It is. And, and actually, again, now this is one, like I could sit and just drink that glass and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I couldn't do that with the biscuit malt. You know, it was just too harsh. You it know? was. That, that was very surprising. Yeah. And for a, a caramel 40, I definitely thought this was going to push it over the edge and it didn't. But I like it. I, I think it's uh, definitely sweeter for sure. And with it being sweeter, I'm kind of guessing that that sweetness would carry over. Like it might be non-fermentable sweetness, you know? Yeah. That would, uh, the, the way that it's just caramelized and everything, that the um, enzymes wouldn't maybe break it down all the way. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Now the caramel nine. Now I'm, I am expecting an extreme caramel flavor. <laughs> And I'm kind of hoping because I, I really, I'm really wanting that caramel punch. Let's that real quick. Don't let me down, caramel ninety. Because I actually want to do a beer and have a really heavy caramel flavor, and that was part of my uh, wanting to do this video, do this experiment, was to see, you know, is is this, which ones are gonna push me closer to that caramel note that I want? Wow. Ooh. That's really in your face. Um, 
Very strong. Very, yeah, very strong. Um, I, I'm guessing it'd be excellent in like browns, darker beers. When uh, I taste that, that's what I think of is a brown. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I get a little bit of the caramel note in there, but it, more of that strong like brown flavor. Yeah, I, yeah, you definitely want to be careful with that one because that will really push you over the edge. Oh yeah, that's it's strong. I like the flavor. I mean, it is a, a good flavor, but a little bit goes a long way. Like I think we would have to dilute that down a, a little bit harder. Yeah, you know, like even. I mean, one ounce water. in in that much water is very overpowering. Yeah. So taken away, like this would be this caramel ninety perfect for a, a brown ale, definitely for sure, yeah. And and then we another kind of fun thing that we could do here is actually mix some of these and play around with it. Yes, you know. Um, what if we add like a little bit of this? Uh, give me one of those other guys. <laughs> Let's take a little base malt, maybe uh, maybe some two row here. I'm actually just gonna pour a little splash in here. What if we just added just a dash in here? See what happens. You want to play too? Then. Actually, I do. I'm, gonna take, I'm actually. I'm gonna see if I can squeeze a little bit of this biscuit out of. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. There's so much you could do with this. There's so many experiments that you could do. Uh, another fun thing would be is uh, if we were to introduce hops into this too, and if we would have had. Um, like some blank water, we could have mixed it in and mm -hmm. maybe even add a touch of vodka to see how the alcohol would play, play with it. Yeah, I mean, that was that was two row and a little bit of biscuit and you can see what the biscuit did to the color already. Oh yeah, it just took over. Actually, it's very nice. <laughs> Ideally, it, it, worked, it, it actually worked well, I'm surprised. Oh wow. Yeah, you know, it toned down that biscuit flavor. Actually, that is very pleasant. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So with the, with the combination now, of course, during fermentation, it's going to strip this down. Oh, definitely. You know, for sure. Yeah. I mean, we're converting these sugars into alcohol and stuff. But this gives you a base idea of what these flavors bring to the table, you know. So when you're building your recipes, you can really kind of fine tune and say, well, I want more of that flavor. Well, remember, we had that biscuit, we gotta be careful with that, you know? It oh, might be too much, definitely. you know? So this is really gonna help us out when we're formulating new recipes. So that wraps up today's session here, and I uh, hope you guys perform this same experiment at home. Uh, grab some other base malts. If you're planning on doing a new recipe, grab those malts before you even brew your beer and do this experiment. And let us know in the comments below if you guys were able to do this and what your results were and if this was a good experiment for you.